titled Predators in the Hospital, uh, Bugs, Bacteria and Parasites. Uh, we have a um, down in Salem where she works and she's going to discuss some of the things that she's been doing to make sure that when you come to her unit you don't live with any hospital acquired infections. I would like to introduce you to a, a segment of the show. It's one of our signature segments. It's called The Body Game. To you, and basically, we're just trying to find out how much you know about your body. Uh, so, we're going to cue in the tape and enjoy. The word is pediculation. word for the feet so is it something to do with the feet oh. that's a very good guess and you're the second person today who has de deduced from the from the root of the word and I, I think that's very smart however that's not what it means do you have another guess <laughs> uh, pediculation is it a condition of uh, you know something to do with not being able to walk properly or is it, <laughs> is it a physical or a mental condition it's actually I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, it's, it's a little gross. It's when you have an infestation of lice. Ooh. Yeah. Not in a thousand guess I would have said that. <laughs> that was your next guess, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again, please. Pediculation. And here it is written okay, down. I'm not, I'm not even going to take a shot at that. <laughs> <laughs> How about... I'm going to say it's a dialysis of your adenoids. <laughs> dialysis. So that would be like draining the adenoids and that would be like a constriction of your adenoids. Yeah. I wanted to say capillaries, but I couldn't couldn't get there fast. That's pretty. You had a good imagination. Um, so a pediculation actually is an infestation of lice. Nice. Yeah. Well, if I if I'd have had one, I would have known that. So there you go. Yeah, you would, you would learn. It's just pediculation. Oh, okay. All right, I could say that. I thought there was like more to it than going too far. Okay. Pediculation <laughs> means. Uh, I think it means uh, like a disease of some sort. Like it's just like <laughs> pediculation. Does it have to do with feet? Oh. Yeah. Said, uh, is it circulation of the feet because you've got petty and chelation? But no, nothing to do with the feet. Pediculation. Pediculation. Um, no. Mm. Yeah. So it's uh, it's when you've got an infestation of lice. <laughs> Luckily, you never had that, so. That may change when she goes to school. Articulation, <laughs> uh, I'm guessing something to do with the foot being petty. Oh. Uh, what smart, smart, smart people in Portland? You all. Yeah. <laughs> is it like, like a disease? That. Yeah. Is it like HIV? <laughs> well, it would fall in the family of some infestation, something that's happening to your body, uh, but it is not HIV or hepatitis. Is it like sexually charged? It's definitely not an STD. We can say that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is? Um, well, from what I heard, I, what I'm thinking is... Uh, some type of drainage of a pustule. Some type of passage of pass it out, right? So kinda like a period. Women having a period. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
don't know where to go. <laughs> you guys will know this word if your kids have ever had lice. My kids haven't. No. <laughs> kids have, yeah. have your kids had lice? Yeah, they have. Yeah, that would be an infestation with okay. lice. Okay, all right. Speculation. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. what you call it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when that happens, you're like, why are you bringing pediculation into my home? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind of like an infestation. <laughs> pediculation. Is yeah. that, like... Obviously, it has something to do with your feet Aww. and moving them and, like, circulation or blood flow of the feet. What makes you say that? Um, because Break of... It down for okay, so petty, like, for the, for the feet, and then... I love the way your brain works. <laughs> you. I mean, she really breaks it down. Pity is feet. That one has got to be when your eyelids flip inside out. <laughs> <laughs> infestation with lice. Ooh, what a bummer. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> School, I don't know how they get it. You say your grandkids? My grandkids, sometimes they've been found with head lice and scary, kind of a scary thought, you know? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> scary. <laughs> my head feel itchy. All right, thank you. Okay, bye now. Bye, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you Jesus. so You've much. Been awesome. Thank you. Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> You know, um, wasn't it fun? Uh, no lice in the hospital, okay? <laughs> we are going to be talking to a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guest, a dear friend of mine. Her name is Kristen Looper. Uh, we work together actually in Salem Hospital. Yes. Yes. And Kristen, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia, for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you know, can you, can you explain to our audience what nosocomial infections are? What, uh, what does that term mean? That means that it's a hospital-acquired infection. Okay. And um, they come, they're a little bit different from an infection you get from the community because it's something that you actually have gotten from a hospital setting. Okay. Well, that, that does clear that up, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Um, so what are the most common type of infections that you get in the hospital? Um, there is a MRSA, which you hear um, some things about that on the news, the MRSA. Mm -hmm. um, the MRSA in the community is a much more aggressive one than you get in the hospital. The only problem with the ones in the hospital is it's devastating because people are immunocompromised. Got it. Um, yeah. There's also some very... Uh, ugly bugs, uh, C. difficile is one, it causes severe diarrhea and gastrointestinal problems. 
Um, <gasps> there is uh, ventilator associated pneumonia mm -hmm. and that's a pretty common. There's uh, urinary tract infections caused by uh, Foley catheters right, from putting right. those in um, central lines, mm -hmm. bloodborne bacteria that gets into your bloodstream from <laughs> central lines. There is. Yeah. So, um, is, is, is there high prevalence of this? Uh, the CDC website, I was doing an, some research, and mm -hmm. in one article, it said that in 2009, there's about 4.5 hospital acquired infections for every 100 admissions, oh. which is pretty significant. It is very significant. Oh my goodness. So, that must be very costly for the hospitals for the consumers too, for the patients who come in. It and is. What it about is. mortality rates and stuff? Well, the, f as far as the cost mm -hmm. goes, um, that same article I was reviewing mm -hmm. said estimated the, the direct hospital uh, cost was 35 to 45 billion annually. <laughs> that's not just one hospital, but this, you know, all of them combined. Right, but right. That's, that's huge. a significant amount. It's huge. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And um, is there a high, is there an increased mortality rate with associated with these infections? Absolutely, absolutely. Because mm. you're already in there sick, and then they get an infection, and their immune system is deteriorated from their oh fighting the other illness. So it's not very good to have two. So um, I, how are <laughs> how are hospital-based infections acquired? I know you mentioned like the fully catheters and the central lines and stuff, but um, how exactly, I would assume that there are ways to prevent that, so how exactly would this happen? Um, it would happen from going from one area of a hospital or touching somebody that's infected mm -hmm. and spreading that via your stethoscope, your hands, uh, equipment that's moved from room to room. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what, guys, <coughs> um, to illustrate the point that she just made, uh, we are going to show you a video about hand washing. It is very, very, very um, significant that you watch this because there's just so many different ways that you can get an infection in the hospital. And we nurses are very mindful of that. And if you could peel in the tip, it would be great. That just gross you all. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, just imagine how easy it is to pick up an infection and how easy it is to transmit that home. So we, we have a work cut out for us. We're very, very mindful of the fact that we want everybody to be safe when they come into the hospital. So, and that's what your nurses are there for. <laughs> so, it's a show about, I know I, we don't mean to gross you out, but it really is a show about bugs and parasites. So you are going to see um, 
you are going to learn about a little bit about it. So, question, how is this diagnosed? How do we find out that a patient has one of these nosocomial infections? Well, if we think a patient is having an infection, uh -huh. an active infection or a lesion of some sort that might be we will swab it or we'll send samples down to the okay. lab and the lab will diagnose uh, or will give us the cultures back and grow it out, whatever it might be. So what would make you think they're having an infection? Um, like if they're having a fever or yeah, something? Yeah, you know, if, they, if it could be a, a urinary tract infection or like a central line infection, you mm -hmm. would see fevers, you'd see... Um, urinary frequency or urgency, right, right, um, right. there's certain signs and symptoms that a, a patient will exhibit. And witnesses pay attention to those things. Absolutely. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do people ever get cured of these diseases? Oh yes, absolutely they do, they do. but they're, okay. you know, it, it makes their fight a little bit more difficult to heal mm -hmm. from whatever their initial diagnosis was, whatever brought them to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Then they got to fight two different infections and it's just not a good thing. And you know, I was reading somewhere that um, C. difficile, which you mentioned, the one that causes that running diarrhea and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read somewhere that it actually um, has a higher mortality rate than AIDS and MRSA combined. Isn't that crazy? Yes, people can, because it's um, some, there is a strain that is very resistant to um, treatment. Okay. And that one uh, is, is quite dangerous. Oh my goodness. So we'll make sure to wash your hands. <laughs> that is for family, that is for patients in the in and out of the bathroom. And you don't want your family taking that stuff home with them. Um, so if somebody acquires one of these types of infections, uh, what kind of precautions do you use in your hospital um, to prevent it from going, to, um, from going from one patient to the other? You know, as a nurse manager, I'm sure mm -hmm. you have a, you know, rules that set in, pretty standardized. Yes, we put patient in isolation precautions and I brought okay. you gifts. Oh my goodness, do I want to <laughs> see this? Yes. <laughs> so this is what we would uh, have to dress up in. Oh, oh yeah. So here's some <laughs> booties for you. You want me to actually put this on the air? Please. Okay, we're going to do that. So there we go. I'm going to do what I do at work. <laughs> I guess I'm already wearing scrubs, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. So put on the booties. Then we have a gown. This is going to protect your clothing. This is good. So if I'm leaning against the patient, you, my gown will be protected or anything, right? My yep. scrubs would be? Yep. And okay. you would have to keep this on for the entire uh, time you're treating your patient. Um, you can take, you'll have to take everything off once you, if, just before you leave the room. So this protects um, me from what, like splashes? Yeah, all of those things. Okay. Um, you, it protects you from getting any bugs off the bed or anything off of, you know, if you touch or rub up against anything. you got to have gloves on. <laughs> of course. And, and I have and to do this every single time? Every, every time. single time you walk in a room, you will need to have this on. And you will have to, uh, before you leave, you take these off so you do not bring them out in the hall. You wash your hands in the room. Here's your little hair now. Of course, you know, I'm not going to mess up your hair, but you would have to uh, have all your hair all the way in. And um, this would also have to come if you were going to, this patient had something that could be droplet mm -hmm. and you're within three feet of that patient, mm -hmm. you would need to have that on and goggles also. I didn't bring you any goggles because it's a little bit, you know, excessive, but that is how you would end up having to dress. And you would do this every time you had to give the patient a drink, a pill, or check their blood pressure or anything. everything. So, this oh, is it. Can it you can take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the room. Oh, I should take it off the way we take it off at work. Do you want to help me with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, taking it off, we want to take it out like this so I'm not actually touching the side that touched the patient, right? Right. And you'd and put that in the trash, you take your gloves off, you wash your hands in the room, and then you would leave, exit the room. Okay, so 
since it all looks gross, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> since it looks all nice and gross right now, we're going to bundle that up. And no, you're not supposed to wear anything like this either when you're up here. <laughs> so, wow, that was pretty interesting. Um, in your ICU, uh, in your ICU, mm -hmm. what are you doing? to prevent those things? Are there any particular? Um, aside from when a patient has an infection mm -hmm. and we have, you know, you're garbing up outside the room and right. going in. Um, for every, of our, every one of our patients, uh, we do a multidisciplinary rounds at Sanium Hospital. Every day, every patient in the ICU gets the physician, the nurse, the respiratory therapist, the pharmacist, the case management, myself and dietary and we all come together and we have a form that we go through and it uh, makes sure that they have feeding and the feeding helps keep the gut tract in order so that they you know has the normal flora in there keeps them from, prevents them from getting C. diff we, we go through everything the ventilator associated pneumonia we have all the prevented bundled up measures that our best practices. Mm -hmm. We bundle those all together. We go through each one of those, and if the patient isn't getting one of those and they, they meet that criteria, then we make sure we address it right then and there. And uh, um, we do this every day. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty intensive. Yes. Well, again, again, that would be why we're also in the ICU, huh? <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That's all we have for the show today. It's been a real pleasure. So glad you um, she has a staff meeting to run too. She has a unit to run after all. <laughs> so we appreciate you coming up. Um, next time. <laughs> Hi. So find us on Facebook. Uh, we are also on YouTube, Real Nurses Television Show. Uh, we appreciate your comments. Um, if you have any show topics that you'd like us to address, please let us know. And our email address will be put in for you as well. It's rn.tv at life.com. See you next time. Ciao.